All right guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to create automated reports with Smart Lead. If you don't know Smart Lead, it's really big platform used for lead generation and also a lot of lead generation agencies are on there specifically because it has a lot of like multi-user functions that are really good for lead generation agencies. So if you have a lead generation agency and you're watching this, you can use this to automate your reporting. But if you're selling automation services to businesses, make sure to prospect to lead generation agencies and sell them this system because this is a huge value add. Instead of them having to manually go through all of the reports inside the app and try and get the data that way, you can just sell them this API or set up the system on their, this system on their side and they will easily pay you 5,000 or more for this. And I'm actually gonna give it away to you for free in this video, so I'm a bit crazy for that. So if you get value from this video, just make sure to leave a comment, leave a like, I would really appreciate it. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, guys, so as per usual, I like to draw it out on the iPad so we have a clear overview of what we're going to accomplish in this video. So again, like I said, we're going to recreate a report for SmartLead. And the way we're gonna do it is as follows. So first of all, we need a Airtable or maybe a spreadsheet. It depends on what you like using where we can actually save the data to, all right? So that's where we're gonna receive the data. Then what we're gonna do inside of make.com is we're gonna trigger the automation and then also we're gonna get the data back to Airtable. So this will be inside make. And then we're gonna run some custom code. So this code is just gonna do requests to the Smart Lead API. And it's basically you know, gonna go past all of the campaigns within the time frame you define. And then it's gonna you know, sum all of those numbers and then calculate the averages. So you have an average for that time period you want and you get it back per client inside of Smart Lead. So this will be the final build, right? So we have the Airtable with the data, then make.com is gonna request to Amazon, get the code, uh, get it from, let's say Smart Leads, who's down here, uh, make sure to request it and then, you know, average it. And then we're gonna give it back to make.com and they're gonna put in an Airtable. Well, if this sounds complicated to you, it's actually not because you can just download the exact blueprints I'm using here from make.com. You can upload them with one click into your make.com instance. So you can get those with the link down in the description, as well as the code. I have already written all of the code for you, debugged it, make sure it works. And you can actually get that for free as well by you know, downloading it in the description. So, and even more so, the Airtable templates, you can actually also get for free when you download it in the description. So you can just copy paste all of this and start implementing it for your own agency or selling it to outbound agencies right away. Make sure to stick around though, because if you don't, you will not understand how the system works. And if any changes come up, if, you're, if, you, want to make some, if you want to make some personalized tweaks, you will not know how it works. So make sure to stick around, but also make sure to download that stuff down in the description. All right guys, so let's get into it. So we're gonna start off, like I said, inside of the Airtable. And we're just gonna say create a table from scratch. And then we're gonna change the color because this color is terrible. So let's make it a little bit nicer, blue. Just give it a name. So if you're already using Airtable, obviously you can add this to your existing Airtable. Or if you're using Google Sheets, you can do a similar process. I'm just gonna show you an Airtable. So what we wanna do is we basically wanna have the first column be something like report name. Then maybe the second one, let's just put in the week number here put in the client ID and then I'll add some other fields as well and just fast forward this because it's a bit boring. All right guys, so I just fast forward it and I set this up. So we have the report number, which is basically the year uh, and then the week number. So it pulls these based on a formula, which I'll show you. So the report number will be the year of the created time. So when the record is created, that's you know what the report is relevant to, so it doesn't change. So it's based on the time the record is created, not when you know now is happening, so it doesn't change every week. And then it takes the week number from this one, so we can also just see the week number separately. So we have a report number and a week number. A report name we can actually remove because that's kind of like what the report number and week number are for. Then we have week review. So in here, you know, you could have some of your team members or yourself leave a note uh, before you send these numbers out to a client, maybe in PDF format, whatever. Uh, leads this week, total email sent and total uh, new prospects this week, the average open rate this week, the average reply rate this week, the sum of the total leads. Maybe if you have like a lead tracking sheet, you can paste it in here. Leads last week, total email sent, new prospects. And this is all based on last week. So this API will actually also pull last week's number so you can present both in a report because when you're reporting to clients it's really important to show the trend of what's happening not just the numbers without any context and obviously you could also look at the last week's last week's report and then fill it out uh, manually 
uh, but why you know do it manually if you can just have it automated and then also the client id is here as well which is actually a field that smartly uses if you have multiple clients and this is also one field that our api that our api splits the results for all right so now that we have the reporting table ready where we want to get the leads and again you can do the same thing in google sheets it doesn't really matter i just prefer Airtable because you can really build out like your own internal SaaS from it which is really good to again sell to clients or use at your own agency or both and especially if you've been using it for a long time you know it gets a lot easier to you know get search back reporting and then maybe link it to other tables where you list out your clients and just have more of that control over the data as opposed to just having a flat spreadsheet anyway next step is to get the script that again you can download with the link in the description get that uploaded to amazon so amazon has aws obviously they sell you a bunch of you know e-commerce products whatever but a really big part of their business if you didn't know yet is aws which is like amazon web services which is just like compute in the cloud basically so we don't have to get into that too much, but all we have to know is that they have a really generous free tier, which is good for us. Because if you're just using this report, running it once or running it like once a week, it will just be free forever. And it's an easy way to deploy code into the cloud. And if you actually want to deploy a different function into the cloud, I actually have a video, I'll put it up somewhere here, that you can go watch after this video, where I teach you how to you know, write code with AI that you can then upload here. So if you don't want to do the reporting API, but you want to do something else, you can watch that video and still, you know, still be able to basically run custom code without knowing how to code. So just make sure to make your account here. And then you know, once you have everything set up, you can log in and you can go to something that's called Lambda. So here at the top, just type in Lambda. And this is basically where you can just run those custom scripts. And then I'm gonna walk you through exactly how to do it. All right, so you're gonna create a new function. And when you create a new function, you're gonna give it a name. So in my case, I gave it the name Smart Lead Report for the runtime. This script is written in uh, Node.js. So you can just click that, leave everything the same and basically just click Create Function. And will take some time to process. All right, so now it pulls this up. And in theory, you know, you could just start writing your code here. But because our code relies on some external libraries, you have to create a deployment package. But you can just download this from the description again. And basically what we'll do is we'll just click upload from zip file. So just upload the zip file and then you hit save. So now that this is uploaded, we have the Airtable ready, we have the code ready. Now we need to set up the make automations that basically trigger the code and then feed back the data into Airtable. So to do that, first of all, we need to create access keys. So in Amazon, basically the way you create access keys or API keys is through IAM. It's basically it's like a way to manage your users. So you go to users and then create a user. You just give it a username like smart lead report or something. Click next. Then you click attach policies directly. And then what you want to do is click Lambda or like search for Lambda. And then select the full access one, click next. And then you want to create a user. And then here inside of the user, what you want to do is you want to go to security credentials and then you want to say create access key. And then you want to say application running outside of AWS and then create access key. And then you get your access key and your secret access key that we're going to use inside of make. So let's go to make right now. All right, so in make, what you wanna do is you wanna set up two automations. So you can download these from the description below as well. But basically the first one we wanna do is the, it's just the, it's just the trigger. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna type in Lambda and we're gonna do invoke a function. You probably haven't used Lambda before, so you're gonna click add. And then you're gonna take your AWS key and your secret key, and you're gonna add them in here as well as your region. So your region will be on the top right, you know, when you're inside of Lambda and basically it will be the closest one to you. And it, if you click on it, you get the code. So for example, if it says Frankfurt, it will be EU-Central-1 and then there's all different regions. What this basically means is where the code is running, like where the actual physical data center is and it will be one closest to you. So just go ahead and fill this out. All right, so what you wanna do is set up the function name here to whatever you call your function. Then the invocation type, you want it to be an event, which means basically we're gonna tell them like, hey, start running, but we're not gonna wait for the response because actually this code can run for like five to 10 minutes, depending on how big your account is, because the Smart Lead API has some limits and we need to do a lot of API calls to get all of the data. So we're not gonna wait for a response. We're just gonna send over the response and then we're gonna define as well. And then we're actually gonna define something that we call a callback URL. So basically we're giving data to the script and then we're like, hey, when, whenever you're done, 
just you know call us back basically on this address which we're going to set up in a bit and then basically once it's done once it's done it will just pass the data back to that location and then we can start putting the data in the Airtable. So to fill this out, you need your API key. So you can get your Smarty API key at your profile and then just copy your API key right here. And then you wanna paste your API key here. And then for the start date and the end date, it depends obviously on what you want. But this automation, the way I use it at my own agency and the way I would recommend using it is running it on Fridays and then running it for the Friday before. So including that Friday until yesterday, which will be a Thursday. So you have a seven day window where you have the full stats because obviously if you include the Friday, you know, you might run the report like halfway through the day. So you have incomplete stats. So you just run it from the week before and basically Friday, including Friday up until including Thursday. And basically the way you set it up, so the date has to be configured in this format. So year, 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 dash month, month, dash day, day. And you can do that with these formulas in make. So it's format date. So you basically say, okay, I want the date formatted in this format. So I actually have to remove the slash here. And then I want to take add days. I want to take now and then I want to add minus one days. So minus one days, so you get yesterday. And then the start day, it's minus seven days. And this way you will get, this way you will get, you know, the reporting dates that I just mentioned. So Friday before till yesterday, which will be a Thursday. And you run this in, on Friday morning. So to set up these things, you can just find them here under the date and time. So you can just say format date, and then you can also set add days and you can do it exactly the way you want it. Just make sure it's in this format in the end and it will be good. And then onto the callback URL. So basically, like I just told you, we'll get a sign back from Amazon when they're done running the code, but we need a callback URL. So for now, we're just gonna save this automation and we're gonna make another one where we configure the callback URL. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say webhook as a start, and then we're gonna add a hook and you can call it like smart lead report or whatever. And then you're gonna get a URL and this will be our callback URL. So this will be our webhook. So if we go back to the other automation and we put it in here and we hit OK and we hit run, we'll get a callback. So let me just fill out the real API key and then I'll show you what happens. All right, so now we triggered the automation with the input and now we'll just wait until we get the callback. So, all right, so it's actually already done because this is my demo account. So in this account, I don't really run many campaigns of Smart Lead, but basically what it, what it did is now it has received the data. As you can see, it's an array of clients. And what we need to do is we need to iterate through that array to basically get into each of the clients. So we just have to select this clients thing here. We're gonna hit uh, save anyway, and then we have to run it one more time. So we can actually get the next steps in the automation set up. So just going back to Amazon and then running it one more time. Guys, something really important I just totally forgot to mention. Um, luckily I noticed before uploading the video, but. When you're in your Lambda and you've uploaded the code, go to configuration, general configuration, and then edit. And then make sure to put the timeout at 15 minutes, which is the maximum. If you don't do it, the code will stop after three seconds. So basically every time you know, it will just time out and you won't get your data. All right, now, so as you can see, it received the callback and then through the iterator, it parses it out and you get the client ID. So this will be set to zero if you only have one client. So this is like my, testing account. I don't use this for clients. So we only have one client, client zero, which is myself. And as you can see, you know, we sent a thousand emails uh, to 129 new prospects. And um, the week before we did 1500. Our open rate is uh, pretty bad, 21%. Our prior rate is pretty low. So as you can see, you know, this testing campaign is not doing too well. Uh, but yeah, basically this way you get the stats. And then the final step we have to do is we have to add in here Airtable, and then we need to create a record. And we can just select the base we created before. And then we can just start filling everything out. So client ID, week review, that's a custom field you will fill in based on the numbers. Uh, leads this week, same. That's something you have to pull from your own tracking. That's not inside of Smart Lead. Then total email sent, so be email sent. As you can see, it aligns, right? I did it the same way. All right, you fill this out. Just hit OK, hit save. And then let's just run it one more time. All right, and then as you can see, it's created the report. And if we go to the Airtable, we can see our report is in here and then we can do the next steps. 
So this is how you can automatically pull your numbers from smart lead. Now the next step would obviously be to share these numbers with your clients. Make sure maybe to just put it in a nice report. And you know, just remember sharing those numbers weekly is, is something that really helped increase retention over at my agency. So I would definitely recommend doing that. And then additionally, you know, if you're selling this to business owners, remember having the right data at the right time is a huge value add. Just imagine an outbound lead generation agency having weeks and weeks on hand where maybe the campaigns of a client aren't performing too well, but they simply don't know because they're not, because they're not pulling their numbers up every Friday by running an automation like this. So when you're pitching this, make sure you know to really dig deep on that and really align basically on you know the importance of having the right numbers. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And again, I've, I've mentioned it numerous times during the video. But if you want to download the code, if you want to download you know the make.com template, the Airtable template, you can do that with the link in the description below. You fill out your email, you get access to a Notion page that has all of the templates there that you can just import. It's completely free. And I'll see you all in the next one.